Hi, I'm Val McKee. I am a writer and a musician and a teacher of both. I'm a Spring Glen mom and a pie maker. And uh, for the purposes of this assignment, I am a woman of a certain age who grew up in a house with much older siblings and cable television, which is how I learned about the movie I'm going to talk about today, uh, Fandango. So, um, Fandango, let's see, it's uh, written and directed by Kevin Reynolds. It was a student film um, that Spielberg picked up for a feature and it came out in 85. It was a bit of a flop. Um, I think it probably found most of its fan base through television, which is how I discovered it and which is how most of you probably discovered it if you have seen it or you um, had friends who discovered it on television and made you watch it, which is often the case. At least I know that I make many of my friends watch it. It's a bit of a litmus test for my friendships and relationships. I like to see where people laugh and where they cry and what they think of the soundtrack because those are the things that I find to be most special about this film. So um, let's see, uh, Fandango. It is about a group of five college age guys. Um, Kevin Costner is in his first lead role here. Judd Nelson is, um, he plays a character that is a bit of a, a nerd, which I just love in juxtaposition to his characters in St. Elmo's Fire and Breakfast Club, which came out in the same year. It's probably his most successful year, right, of his career. Um, Sam Robards, who is the son of Lauren Bacall and Jason Robards, and then two other actors, I don't know who they are, I've never seen them again, but um, are so fantastic. And one of them plays a gentle giant seminary student, and the other plays a character that passes out in the first scene and doesn't regain consciousness until the very end of the movie. There's a bit of beer drinking in this movie. It is about four, I'm sorry, five college age guys um, off on an adventure. Um, so the movie opens with a graduation slash bachelor party and um during this party uh which could so easily set the stage for like an animal house type film um two of the characters announce they've been drafted to the vietnam war one of them uh announces that he's canceling his wedding and that's when kevin costner's character gardner decides that they are going to go on what he calls a farewell fandango for the groovers that's what this group of five friends calls themselves the groovers so they load into a car and they head off to the rio grande to dig up what uh we know is called dom we don't know if it's someone or something called dom but we know that that is their destination um so they um, load in the car and go off for 400 miles to dig this thing up. And hilarity ensues. I don't know what else to tell you. It is a hilarious movie, but it's not just a hilarious movie. There is something so um, beautiful about the friendship and the, the dynamic of the relationships between these five friends, their challenges, how they overcome them, how they support one another. That's really the heart of the movie, but it's all surrounded by this hilarity. Actually, the movie opens before the first scene. It opens with a definition of the word fandango. It says that it's a lively Spanish dance with rhythm that varies from slow to quick. And it's also a foolish act. And we know that they're on this road trip that's this foolish act, but the rhythm of the movie really does mimic that of a fandango where you have these hilarious scenes full of one-liners and then you have these moments of really um deep thoughtful reflection on what it means to be young moving into adulthood or as Gardner so eloquently calls it innocent critters squashed on the highway of life um, which pretty much sums it up. But um, you have these really beautiful moments and then every time you start to get a little too deep in it, something really hilarious happens. <laughs> um, the whole film is surrounded by amazing music. The soundtrack is absolutely 
remarkable. It begins with Cream's badge, ends with Blind Faith's I Can't Find My Way Home, and in the middle you have such amazing music from beginning to end, um, particularly Pat Metheny and Lyle May's songs that they do for the film, which I actually thought was written for the film for many years. I found out later that um, they were songs previously released and that just is unbelievable because they just match so well with the scenes. They're all built so nicely together, um, especially this stone soup-esque wedding scene at the end of the movie where um, the song is It's For You. And um, I mean, I can just remember being 10 years old and watching this scene and thinking, that is what my wedding's going to be like. That's what my first dance is going to be like. This is exactly what my group of friends is going to be like. We're going to go on all these adventures. We are going to have you know, support each other in this way. And, and it's just such like a gorgeous film it was a real fantasy for me. I think growing up, um, that this is what it's going to be like to be a grown up. Um, I can't talk about this movie without talking about the soundtrack, but also without talking about the um, origin of the film. So Kevin Reynolds started out, um, this film was a, his, his student project. Um, it was a short film and it, um, there's a scene in the movie that is the parachute school scene. If anybody has ever seen the movie, they know exactly what I'm talking about because it is just absolutely hilarious, so brilliantly done. And it stars um, as the parachute school instructor, Marvin J. McIntyre, who have never seen in anything else, but I swear this person should be considered one of the great comedic actors of our time because he is just for this scene alone, because it's so hilarious. Um, and uh, he plays a character called Truman Sparks. This scene is worth the price of admission. That and like the opening credits, which by the way are set to um, Elton John's Saturday Night's All Right for Fighting. There are so many wonderful scenes. This parachute scene is just absolutely hilarious. So memorable. Um, the Truman Sparks character is so memorable. Um, Marvin J. McIntyre plays it perfectly. Everything is just so hilarious. Um, I find myself thinking about it on my saddest days, <laughs> laughing. Um, I can't recommend it enough. If you haven't caught it on television, then head down to Best Video as soon as they open their doors again, and please check out Fandango. Thanks so much, guys. Hang in there.